Alright guys, what's going on? It's Jack and welcome back to another video and we're going to be doing a preseason review in this one. So it's kind of like a review of the game so far and uh, I'm thinking I'm going to do one of these for every single season. So we're going to start with the preseason. Now, I do know that there's about two weeks left of this preseason and to be honest with you, I really don't see much of a change coming except from, uh, from here into the end of the preseason, except for Team Deathmatch. So other than that, I really don't expect any drastic changes within the game in this next uh in these next two weeks so to speak especially with season one kind of uh being around the corner well not around the corner but more like down the street we're about two weeks away from that so uh until then i figured i might as well do a preseason review as you can see on your screen i've actually put in over 140 hours into this game no joke about it this is from uh x defiant tracker and You'll actually see screenshots of a ja the Jack of All Trades as well as Justice X7. Now, when I log into the game, it's on my Justice account, but it automatically has me playing as a Jack of All Trades. And as you'll see, the stats are pretty much the same uh, on both accounts. And I'm even going to put it in the in-game stats that you see like within the game. And you can see that it's lagging behind in terms of how many hours it shows there compared to how many hours I've actually put into the game. So after putting in so many ridiculous hours in such a short period of time since the release of the game until now, doing something like this only makes sense. So um, I am going to give my uh, full unbiased opinions. I'm not really going to be, uh, you know, I'm not going to be biased towards the game at all. I am going to be very critical, but at the same time, I'm also going to be fair. So I'm going to be breaking it down and, of course, taking my opinions into the mix. So some of you guys might have had a little bit difference of uh, difference of uh, an experience with uh, whatever that you guys have, have been having. But for the most part, these are my experiences and they're completely unbiased. And then towards the end, I am going to be giving some final thoughts as well as in terms of like a score, so to speak, since this is kind of a kind of a review, so to speak. So anyway, let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the first thing we see. What do we see when we first get into the game? We see its graphics, right? When you're looking at things like the UI, for instance, I really like the simplicity of it. Uh, I think with some other games out there, uh, we've seen that some uh, UI elements have become a little complicated, surprisingly so, so I really appreciate the simplicity. But ultimately, the first thing you see is obviously um, the graphics when you get into the game and you start to look at things. Uh, and truth be told, it looks like a last-gen game. I've seen people say that it even looks like a 360 game, and I can totally see where they're coming from. Uh, in my humble opinion, though, that doesn't matter because gameplay, to me, is more important than graphics, especially when it comes to a multiplayer shooter, let alone an arcade multiplayer shooter. And if you are going to make the comparisons to Call of Duty, then I'm going to say, well, you know, Black Ops 2 to this day, if it still, if it still were to... Uh, kind of be a thing and people were to still play it even with its graphics and stuff like that back then compared to the Call of Duty games that have been coming out now. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 will still stand tall compared to the games that we got now. The only thing that I would request of Black Ops 2 is Infinite Sprint, really. If you were to give that game the same amount of speed that you gave, let's say, a Call of Duty World War 2 with Infinite Sprint, it would still stand tall to this day because it's Black Ops 2 and it did so many things right. But yet again, even that game is not immune to criticism. But with that being said, I think my point is, is clear. Um, but if you are a person to where you're expecting something in terms of something that came out literally a month ago, uh, to look around the same standards as most games do today in terms of new titles and stuff like that, uh, truth be told, you're going to be disappointed if that is important to you. Uh, another thing that I will say is obviously you can still play the game at high frame rates. There's all sorts of different settings for PC. Console is obviously simpler, but you can still play up to 120 frames on console, obviously. Uh, targets are easily seen and easily visible, so that is something that, that is very important. So as far as that is concerned, as far as the graphics in terms of what you see with your eyes, that's pretty much it. The game is also very vibrant. There's really a lot of really good colors to it. And, and in that aspect, it actually has its own identity in terms of its, uh, in terms of its uh, vibrancy and the way it implements the colors and the vibrancy, which I personally really appreciate. And I think a lot of people that really like to easily see their targets can appreciate that as well. So uh, that is the first thing. Now, going on to the next thing I want to talk about and is some of the gameplay stuff. So now, like I said, the gameplay is that... Uh, it's basically a Black Ops 2 with infinite sprint with some bunny hopping thrown in as well as some air strafing. Now, the first thing I want to say is that if you are having a, uh, 
If you are having a problem with the bunny hopping and the air strafing, so to speak, uh, in the game, but yet at the same time you liked Advanced Warfare and you liked Black Ops 3 or Infinite Warfare, then to me that just doesn't make sense because this is, believe it or not, even though it's fairly quick when it does happen, uh, it is something that in comparison to what you can do in a game like a Black Ops 3 or an Advanced Warfare and an Infinite Warfare, it's kind of subtle and it's quick. It's not as, you know, so at its heart, even if you look at this gameplay that you're seeing here in the background, this is obviously a boots on the ground game, right? For like 90 to 95% of what you'll be doing is running and gunning and then the jumping and the air strafing and all that other stuff is going to be taking place another 10% of the time, so to speak. Are there a few people that are like literally abusing it and that are literally doing it like almost every time you see them? Yes, but at the same time, it's not going to do them good in like literally every single engagement because you know, if somebody is picking them off from more of a distance, it's not as viable. It is somewhat viable, but not as viable, you know what I mean? And with a game like this, when there's so many different things put into the mix with, with a boots on the ground shooter to where engagements can happen either up close, medium range or far range, it, there's plenty of variety and a little thing in my opinion, <clears throat> excuse me, a little thing in my opinion, like the bunny hopping and the air strafing, so to speak, is not as, it, it's nothing compared to the advanced movement that we had in COD. But the devs are constantly uh, working on it to see uh, how they can nerf it and, and they're constantly getting data and they're sharing that with us. So it's already been nerfed, uh, but in terms of the bunny hopping, uh, and we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening and we'll see if they'll keep nerfing it just a little bit more or just keep it the way it is. Now, um, now one other thing I wanna say about the gameplay that is a pro is that the fun factor is there. And as long as the fun factor of the game remains to be there, it, it, it has legs. It has the potential to reach its destination, so to speak. And of course, the lack of skill-based matchmaking is something that fits in perfectly with a game like this, not only because arcade shooters are casual in and of themselves, especially one like this, where you have factions and you have all these abilities and all these different kinds of way of approaching things, as well as the objectives, but, uh, uh, but you've also got uh, the fact that you've literally got everything that you could possibly want in one lobby, right? You've obviously got ping is king, which is great. You know, the, the ping is very steady. Uh, and at the same time, you've also got like, you've got your, your, your good players, you got your bad players, and then you got everybody in between. That is the true casual experience. And that is where, uh, things like trying out different guns and, and trying out things that are not the meta or just fooling around and experimenting and all that kind of stuff come in, right? It allows for that for as, which when, if you have an, a skill-based matchmaking or engagement optimized matchmaking system in there it doesn't allow you to do that or else you're going to pay the price even more and therefore the game is going to be less fun and all that kind of stuff so there you go uh also uh playing the objective is obviously incentivized and that comes with the combination of the map design which we'll get into later uh, as well as the factions themselves which again we'll get into later and like i said my ping is solid and the search times are fast when you ever whatever time you search okay and i've played like very very often i've played from 11 p.m through 5 p.m. in a good amount of sessions. Uh, I'm sorry, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. And I can tell you that my the time that it takes to find a game could take anywhere from a few seconds to a maximum of like, let's say 20 to 30 seconds. And my ping on 95% is on average from 38 to 41 or 42, okay? Which is pretty solid. So that is definitely something that I think every single person can, uh, can certainly appreciate uh, uh as well as a few of the cons as far as the gameplay goes i will say uh the sliding feels off i can't really quite wrap my finger around it but the sliding feels off it feels like every aspect of the game and its movement has a certain pacing to it but the sliding itself has a different pacing to it that just doesn't sync with the rest of the game if that makes sense um, and of course, the big elephant in the room is that desync continues to be an issue. Desync is very much an issue in this game. There has been very little change in terms of how it feels. Like in terms of hit registration, it, like that has been improved, but yet the being shot around corners and, and every, things like that, uh, which is the, one of the bigger annoyances when it comes to desync, is still very much there. It still, ne it still has a ways to go until it gets fixed. But because of that fun factor that's in the game for varying reasons, uh, whether it be 
you know, playing the OBJ because of the factions, getting kills because of the factions, getting kills because the gunplay feels good, uh, the lack of SBMM, the map design and all that kind of stuff, all these things put together is what's keeping the game fun regardless of the fact that there's a damn desync issue. And it is, it is something that is very, very significant and I hope it gets patched soon because people can only take so much of annoyance with something like this. And when it comes to connection, uh, it, it is like, well, the connection is fine, but th when it comes to the server and stuff like that, this is this is right up there with it, and it needs to get fixed ASAP. And it's something that's going to be continuously worked on, continuously patched. But with that being said, it is it is something that you definitely need to uh, you it definitely needs to be addressed. But at the same time, when you kind of look at it, it's like. You know, ba back during the Black Ops 1 days, I think we can all agree that Black Ops 1's hit detection was not very good at all. But at the same time, the rest of the game was so good that we kind of let it slide, right? But this is this is different because it's a desync issue. You're, you're getting shot around uh, corners in terms of when you think you have cover. And it happens a lot, and you might even see it in this gameplay. As a matter of fact, I can guarantee you it, you will because it happens in every game, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. And I love this game. Okay, I've obviously put in this much time into this game because I love it, but there's not a game that goes by to where I do not experience this problem uh, in some way, shape, or form. So this needs to be fixed. All right, moving on to the next part, uh, maps. Um, bravo. Uh, bravo to the devs. The maps are great. Obviously, there are some maps to where I think, well, maybe it could do without this or whatnot, but for the most part, the maps are very solid. It's a three-lane structure. The size of the maps are solid. There's quite a lot of action. They encourage movement. They encourage uh, objective-based gameplay. The angles in terms of where you can pick people off if you're using a distance weapon are great. Uh, for the most part, there's not too much clutter on these maps either. So it's it's fairly open, but at the same time, not so open to where it's insane or something like that. Uh, obviously, uh, just like every other game out there, there are safer spots that you can be in, but at the same time, there are also risks because it's not like you, they got to work you know, up to, uh, it's not like they have to search for you room to room. They're very simplistic in that aspect, but that is not a bad thing. That is actually a good thing. Simplicity is better because in arcade shooters, arcade shooters is, is a fairly simple game. Now, if you were talking a tactical shooter, then that's completely different. It would make more sense for there to be more safe spaces and stuff like that. But that's not what this is. This is an arcade arena shooter, so therefore the map design needs to be simple, and I really like the simplicity. I think they, I think they really nailed it in terms of size and in terms of how these maps work as well as the flow. Uh, obviously, there's maps that I love, and there's obviously some maps that I'm not too crazy about. But overall, the map design in the game supports the gameplay very well. It supports the factions very well, as well as the game modes that come in the game. And uh, I would say that they're they're pretty damn solid. All right. So let's move on to the next thing I want to talk about is uh, guns and create a class. So um, guns are great. We don't have too many of them, though. That's a problem. We have 24 in total. This includes the secondaries. But uh, in terms of your main weapons, you know, we don't have too many for every single uh, category. But for now, until season one, we have enough to work with. And I think uh, I, I do like... I don't mind the pros and cons system because it allows for different varying classes in accordance with playstyle. However, it can be confusing and I really can't help but miss the simplicity. You know, like why can't we have a simple system to where attachments just make your weapons better without any cons, but just give us either more or less attachments to use, like probably less, you know, but, uh, and people can still use all sorts of different combinations. I mean, in Call of Duty, I remember whenever I picked up somebody else's gun, uh, back when I played COD, back before, you know, Modern Warfare 2019, I would have all sorts of combinations of attachments. Sometimes I'd be like, oh, what the heck is this? But at the same time, you know, you get the point, right? Uh, but uh, it is what it is. Um, it's certainly not as uh, complicated or confusing as the gunsmith system that they have in Call of Duty nowadays. So it's a lot simpler that way. Um, but with that being said, there's still, you know, pros and cons, so to speak. But in my opinion, it is a little bit more balanced and a little bit more simple because there aren't like, I don't know, like 30 attachments per uh, or, or, or 100 attachments per weapon, so to speak. Um, it's it's a little bit more simple that way. It's more like seven to ten, or seven, yeah, seven, yeah, seven to ten uh, attachments per uh, per category of attachment. You can only have up to five attachments for your weapon. So, and again, you could use the same weapon, but you can have like three different builds or more. Uh, and you can kind of decide of, of which one you want to play today or what you want to use for any game mode specifically, or just what you're feeling on that particular uh particular session so uh, but like I said the game needs more weapons um, and I really can't wait for that 
All right, um, let's see, what else am I talking about? The system is a combination of attachments and yeah, okay. Let's keep going now, um, factions are next. So I will say this, as, as annoying as they are to use, right? As annoying as factions are to use, I'm sorry, not use, as annoying as they can be, uh, they are fun to use and they encourage objective-based gameplay and they support that, which is great. Uh, they kind of work like a system, like to where you've got your perk, which is your passive trait, and then you get to pick one of two uh, uh, abilities. And then after that, you have your ultra, which is in the form of basically like a support streak, so to speak, right? So, uh, and they're all great to use. Every single faction has something annoying about it, and every single faction has something powerful about it, or every faction has something that could be used a little bit of tweaking. But I think they, surprisingly, they work better in the game than I thought. Uh, at first, I was very, very much... Uh, annoyed but right but as of recently i'm less annoyed and more intrigued in terms of where they go with this not in terms not just in terms of what factions we're going to get in the future and what they will do but also how they tweak factions because they're still gathering data so we will see but for the for the most part i will say this they're they're more of a good thing than they are a bad thing or an annoying thing so to speak it's it's more of a positive than a negative it's kind of like it's almost like they took the modern warfare 2 of 2019 uh not 2019 excuse me of a 2009 approach to where it's like hey if everything is strong then everything is balanced right so it has its own way of kind of being balanced if you think about it but you know at the same time there are a few things that i still think need to be tweaked here and there but I do see a ton of variety being used in every lobby, and this is a good thing. Uh, obviously, you're going to get a few lobbies here and there to where you're going to have people using uh, one type of faction, so to speak. In that aspect, maybe there could be some balancing in terms of maybe how many factions you're allowed to use in uh, in, um, in in, in uh, casual play. But obviously, in competitive, that's going to be different. But in casual play, um, uh, they may need to tweak that a little bit, but we'll, we'll see. Um, obviously, things like the spider bot are annoying, but as well as the Insos, in, Intel suit and then the 120 ba base health for the Phantoms. But as you can see, there's always, everything has something that's, you know, annoying. But, you know, again, there are other games out there with this type of mentality and those are not immune and neither is this game. But at the same time, is it fun? Yeah. Are people playing the objective? Yeah. Are people moving around? Yeah. So I would count this as a win. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, I want to talk about game modes content in the firing range uh obviously we're having a ranked mode as well coming up uh in season one but we don't have it yet the kind that we have right now is basically ranked mode but without the ranks so to speak and without the the matchmaking being on par for that i think there's going to be some changes implemented in that as well as the ranking itself so that way you have something to work towards now um uh as far as what this game really needs not gonna lie, it is shallow in the content department. It is shallow in the weapons department. It needs more of those. It needs a few things like prestige mode, which is coming. It needs a, a few more game modes, which are definitely coming as well, but they're not in here in the game. Now, obviously next week, I believe Team Deathmatch is gonna be uh, is gonna be released and that's fine. It's something that should have been there at launch, but that's fine, better late than never. But uh, the thing is this though, uh, there needs to be more modes, there needs to be more weapons, and there needs to be more content supporting those things like uh, additional challenges, additional campaigns, and stuff like that but the good news is is that all those things are coming but the game did not release with those things so for some people that's going to be an instant turn off and it's going to turn them away from the game because it's just too bare bones but at the same time as much as i understand what players of this day are uh, where they're coming from i have to say when it comes to a game right that is in this sort of uh in what this is presenting to us for now right the biggest thing that counts above everything else is the fun factor. But for some people, they're just not having fun unless there's a ton of content and they can only have fun for a certain period of time until that content gets released. I understand that, I totally get it. And some people just get bored faster than others. It, it is a fact, everybody's different in that aspect. However, uh, the game does have a good base, right? The game does have a good base, but at the same time, it does need a shot in the arm as soon as it possibly can in the form of content and in the form of creature, uh, I almost said creatures, uh, features. But the good news is, is that all those things are coming, but they're not here currently other than the team deathmatch that is coming up. And uh, the firing range mode is great. I think it's a great addition. It is something that uh, they, the devs are telling us is a work in progress, but it is nice that it is there. Um, obviously, things like um, private matches are not there, which is a really big, uh, which is a 
for in a lot of people's eyes is a very big uh, letdown. But with that being said, I think that's coming in season one as well. There's a lot of things coming in season one, and I think season one is probably going to be the most important season of them all. Because right now, this is a preseason. It is It lasts half of the length of a regular season. And it's basically kind of getting the game ready to uh, go at full throttle, so to speak. We've been cruising right now, but season one, as I mentioned before, is like full throttle, and then that is when game start. That is when the game starts to go at another level, and hopefully they'll give us a good dose. And what I mean by that is we need a good amount of content and a good amount of features that will keep players busy. We know we're going to be getting one one map every single uh, month, which is great. Uh, but at the same time, we still need weapons. We still need more challenges. We still need you know all these things prestige system and all these other features you know like a theater mode possibly or a kill cam or something like that and, and private matches and all that stuff that uh, we don't know yet we, we won't know until the day before uh season one officially launches which is going to be july 1st july 2nd is when it's going to launch july 1st is when we're going to have the insights event so um so that's going to be a really big day for x defiant and hopefully they hit the ground running with that because that is what this game needs because Slowly but surely, you know, we're in week four now. As of the time of this recording, we're in week four and we got two weeks left. So it's like, you know, people are waiting for that season one to come out and they're waiting for all that content. And hopefully they give us a really good dose because as it said before, first impressions are important and giving people a good amount of content in that first season, especially within that first week or two or, you know, is extremely, extremely important. And of course, over time, they need to continue to uh, working on that desync issue because it is it is a part of the foundation and you do, you do not want this game to, to be known for having bad desync issues. This is, believe it or not, this desync issue that the game has is enough to for people that even love these sort of games to not even give them a try. There's a few content creators that I would love, for instance, just to give you an example, that I would love to pl to watch play this game because it's a game that's certainly up their alley. They've talked about a game like this and here it is, but I won't even ask them why they're not playing it. And the reason being is because of that desync issue. That Something small like that is enough to keep players away. Like I remember, like uh, I'll give you one example. Um, uh, obviously, Pwn Stars, who's one of my favorite players to watch, one of the best Call of Duty players I've ever seen play, for instance, uh, uh, you know, he uh, he's not playing X Defiant, but uh, back during Black Ops Cold War, he didn't play Cold War. You know why? Uh, at that time, he had switched a few years prior, he switched to PC, and uh, he, uh, he was very well aware of this mouse and keyboard problem. Uh, as well as like I think a hit registration problem that it was having specifically for PC so therefore he barely touched the game I don't think he touched it at all so which was a big bummer for me and it sucked bec because I would have loved to have seen him play that but I I know that he's not the only one that's you know that's turned off like that like if, if players out there see bad hit registration or, or a desync issue they're just not going to play because they're too annoyed and as you know today's players are annoyed greatly they're annoyed easily they don't have that much patience which is why season one is going to be so important so in terms of my final thoughts and score in terms of this game in terms of where it is right now in its current state in terms of what we have uh, i would give this game a solid seven out of ten you know in my eyes this is a solid seven out of ten that could easily be a nine or more as time goes on with the content, with features, with the desync fix, with the transparency of the devs. And I will say this in closing, the number one weapon, other than this this game not having skill-based matchmaking, the number one weapon that this game has going for itself is the transparency of the devs and how they are listening to us, like literally listening and communicating to us and going back and forth. And I absolutely love that. And I think that that is this, the one thing that is going to literally take this game to another level in terms of where it needs to go. And uh, and I think this game has poten uh, tremendous potential to do so. And uh, the devs need us, we need the devs. And as long as we keep that relationship healthy, I think the game will remain healthy and I think the game will, uh, will indeed reach its destination, which is to be a game that is relevant for years to come. But anyway, guys, that pretty much concludes my, uh, my little review of the preseason. And like I said before, I know there's two weeks left, but at the same time, other than Team Deathmatch, there really, I don't see too much change happening, especially with the release of season one coming up. And these guys need to be in full gear for that. And with that being said, I'd really like to know down in the comment section what you think. What are your opinions on this 
preseason. What are your opinions of the game? Are you having fun? Are you not having fun? Uh, is you know everything that was mentioned here, or maybe something that was meant was not mentioned here? You can let me know uh, down below. So anyway, with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, and let me know everything down below. And as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch and or listen, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.